gas exchange. This is a really important topic for us to understand at a super high level. Do we really need crazy details about it? Is it specific to CO2? No, but understanding why the turbulence at the top level of your water is a really fundamental thing for all of us aquarists. So let's start talking about gas exchange. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. And today, we're gonna look at this right here. See it? The water movement? That's gas exchange. Oh, what you thinking? Should we be talking about something else? Maybe how flow patterns interact? Or what about the spray bar? Let's talk about spray bars. I was originally gonna do a spray bar video. Uh, then I got really sick. <laughs> And this phenomenal video from Pongru came out showing spray bar water flow in an aquarium. And after watching his video, honestly, I felt I don't need to do one. His is perfect. Uh, and somebody's probably going to be like, that's not perfect. Blah, 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 blah. It explains what I want to explain. So instead, I want to talk about gas exchange. But if you do want to learn about spray bar flow inside an aquarium, that video is going to be on the corner. Credit to Pongru down in the description as well. Dude's awesome has lots of great videos. Uh, this one in particular, I really liked. So let's talk about gas exchange and flow and things like that. And we'll have some, some B-roll come up for a second to kind of explain a couple of things too. But when we're looking at gas exchange, often this is a, a question about like CO2 and how much CO2 are you losing in gas exchange? And wow, oh, being, being terrified of the flow and the turbulence at the top of your water. And what really happens is this, when that water moves, right? We could be adding aeration to a tank, like we are right here. But the amount of oxygen that that adds by those bubbles going up is significantly less than what's happening at the top of the water where that, when that air comes all the way up and starts rippling the surface and causing that turbulence, that's where a huge portion of our gas exchange is occurring. And when we use something like a hang on the back filter, like this tank over here, or we're using a canister, and we see this lovely current that keeps the water churning constantly, what that's doing is it is helping remove some gases from the aquarium that are coming into excess and help introduce things that we are starting to lose. So most typically, and the way that I really want you to think about this is, if we do not have excessive levels of oxygen in our water, that turbulence is helping to continuously introduce more oxygen into the water supply, thus allowing our fish to continue to survive and breathe, right? We're also losing some other gases, whether that is like nitrogen gas, which could be expelled from your substrate as the natural bacterial processes occur and break down your fish waste and slowly convert it through, right? Uh, CO2, which is naturally gonna build up, but not really that much. When you are losing CO2 through gas exchange, it's mostly because you have an excess amount for what kind of is an, an equilibrium point for where the water at its current temperature is happy. And that's the key thing. As water gets warmer and warmer, it can hold less gas in general, but especially as far as we're concerned, oxygen. And as water cools down, it has a higher capacity for containing gas. Again, where we care, oxygen. When we're creating this gas exchange, what really happens in the grand scheme of things, and I'm sure someone could go way more scientific about it and talk about the percentages of gas introduced and blah, 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 based on the atmosphere and this and that. Ignore all of that. All that you and I really need to care about is this is kind of nature's way to create an equilibrium point, balance. And that balance is the amount of gas, mostly oxygen, again, for what we care about, however, it is a lot of other gases, that can be held within the water. If it is completely still, protein films will form and no gas exchange can occur anymore. So realistically, what we want is a reasonable amount of turbulence at our water because that helps assist in gas exchange. And as long as we have kind of a continuous amount of gas exchange, our water should, should contain enough oxygen and prevent enough buildup of harmful gases to the point in which our fish are able to survive and thrive. Now it should be noted, if you are injecting CO2 at an extremely high rate, 
and your bubble counter is just like flying. You can't even count them. And the, the little diffuser has just got a continuous cloud that looks like it's been, uh, you know, visiting Willie Nelson's trailer or something. That is going to put excessive amounts of CO2 and even a reasonable amount of turbulence is not going to keep that in check. So we do need to keep in mind that if we are purposefully injecting extremely high levels of CO2, we probably want some amount of gas exchange, but more importantly, we need the plants to be helping to supplement the amount of oxygen being put into the aquarium. Realistically, most aquariums do fine anywhere between about 20 and 35 parts per million of CO2. And, and that's when we're talking injected CO2. Most of our aquariums are sitting somewhere in like five to 10 parts per million if we're not injecting CO2. And if you're doing kind of my method, the low and slow, you're probably somewhere between 15 and 20, most likely, where you're not really putting a ton of gas into the water, but you're putting enough to help boost the plants just a touch. This has been a fast video, I know, but we're gonna dive into this tank and look at the ripples and we'll talk a little bit over the top. So now that we're looking at a tank, we can see a natural amount of turbulence occurring, but you can kind of see that there is significantly more toward the front of the tank here than there is toward the back. And I've done this on purpose. What? We're just gonna take you. We're gonna handheld this. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Gonna handhold it. Hold on, baby. Hi, buddy. I'm gonna go handheld here. So, hopefully, you can see the amount of turbulence, and you'll notice that it is significantly lighter toward the back of the tank. And if we drop down kind of in the, the water view here, you can see the reason why. I have this spray bar at a slight angle. And what that does is it allows the front of the tank here to be closer to the surface in where the water is jetting out. And the back of the tank is just a bit little lower. Now, this doesn't necessarily affect the amount of water making across here over to the return, but what it does is it helps prevent the biofilm from building up along the front of the tank and realistically everywhere as long as I'm monitoring my water levels. What this does, however, is it creates a more active amount of oxygenation away from the return. So since the return is toward the back of the tank, and we're creating more and more of this turbulence toward the front and even a little bit in that back corner, but really toward the front. What it is doing is it's creating the higher level of oxygenation through here. And as that water travels through this side of the tank, comes across and makes it into the return, that water has had time to gain extra oxygenation before it is moving through the system and again coming back out over here. Is this super scientific? No, but this is kind of an example of how you can do things. And, and a similar example would be like if you had your water flow coming from back to front, right? Instead of a side to side spray bar like I have here. What you would wanna do is probably have that relatively close to the surface to maximize the amount of turbulence on this side of the tank, especially, so that as that water moves around and comes back toward that return, it has a very high level of oxygenation. And that helps maintain balance so that your plants have what they need, your fish have what they need, and the tank can look good. So now that we've had that quickie lesson about how I'm controlling my flow a little bit in order to maximize oxygenation in a specific pattern, I hope you can kind of understand the importance of gas exchange. I know this is a super simple lesson and, and nothing that we're going super complex on, but it's really important to understand that gas exchange is necessary in an aquarium. Completely still water is bad really, really, really bad. And often where you see this are some of these ponds that are not like true long-term existing ponds. And you'll see that like thick film that grows over the top of them. And that film will cause all sorts of problems, namely preventing that gas exchange and really inhibiting or completely preventing the ability for fish to live in those water systems. Where we're creating artificial water systems even with ones with plants where plants are going to produce some oxygen, it behooves us and is important for us 
to find some other additional gas exchange because that helps maintain a level of equilibrium within our water. In conjunction of when we do water changes, this can help prevent buildup of any kind of toxic, whether it is gas or particulate in the water, to help maintain our fish in the best environment possible so they can live long, healthy lives and hopefully do things like make more fish, right? It's one of the benefits. And one thing that I would really caution a lot of you to do is, let's say that you have a fish that can't really handle high flow rates, so you're worried about the amount of turbulence. Even something like this sponge filter, which is not producing a lot of, a lot of like huge turnover, what is happening when it hits the top of this water is all that rippling and bubbling and all that kind of stuff is creating a good amount of gas exchange. And that gas exchange is helping to make sure that even in a tank like this, where there's not a huge amount of plants, it can still produce plenty of oxygen and be a healthy environment for the fish within. Really hope you've enjoyed this short video, kind of talking about an important subject. I know this is really high level and very simple. We're not doing anything too crazy here, but gas exchange and aeration in your aquariums are two really important things. And understanding where the, the turbulence at the top of your water matters from a like pure scientific standpoint is I think a really fundamental lesson that a lot of people often skip. And some people really freak out and be like, I'm gonna lose all my CO2. You're, you're not, you're not losing enough to really matter in the grand scheme of things, unless you're running some crazy river system that's got like 35 times turnover and way more than, you're not losing that much CO2. Don't stress, okay? You're not losing that much CO2. But what you are doing is help maintaining a level of equilibrium and balance within your water to help your fish have the best chance at success. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Maybe if you learned something, put a little comment down below. What's your favorite way to create gas exchange? Is it by having dojo loaches? They fart, that's gas exchange. <laughs> uh, for my wife, that's what it is. It's dojo loaches, that's her gas exchange of choice. Uh, but, uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Do you believe in how I have an airstone in every aquarium no matter what? Uh, do you believe in, oh, I only need like the flow that comes from my filter naturally? Are you the person who always, always, always will only have air driven filtration because you want to make sure you're adding all that? You know, let me know in the comments down below. I hear, love hearing your guys' stories, your experience. It's one of my favorite parts about being uh, a fish YouTuber is getting to interact with y'all. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome. <laughs>